Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now last week I spoke to Yona Knight Wisdom. He was the first diver to represent Jamaica in the 2016 Olympic Games, which was incredible. I mean, we've grown up together, diving together for the last 15 years. We've known each other, which is, you know, insane. But today I'm gonna to be speaking to another diver turned bodybuilder, Rhea Gale. Uh, we dived together in Plymouth for uh, a few years, more than a few probably. Then in 2016 she started bodybuilding and now is one of the top 10 bodybuilders in the world and she is just an incredible athlete. So I wanted to get her perspective of everything that's going on in the world. So I'm really excited to listen, learn and I hope you are too. Hi Rhea, how are you? I am good, how are you? I'm, I'm doing good. I just was looking back on photos from us well, when we used to train together, because oh, no. for people that don't know, we used to train together as divers. And mm -hmm. then you, well, obviously we're an amazing diver, represented GB on lots of different levels. Um, mm -hmm. And since retiring, have become a professional, would we say bodybuilder, fitness what, Yeah, athlete? so the sport is bodybuilding, but my category is figure. So a pro figure athlete, yeah. Wow, and since then, <laughs> you have, let me get this right, you have <laughs> 13th at the Olympia in 2019 and top 10 yeah. at the Arnold Classic. So you are like officially pro, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the, which is absolutely, I mean, it's incredible. I I, I remember um, when you said that you were going to start it and I was like, what does that even involve? Like where do you <laughs> even go from going, yeah. from diving? And before that you were doing gymnastics. Yeah. And so you've done a whole plethora of sports by now, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Which one have you enjoyed the most? Oh, it's a toss up between diving and bodybuilding. Um, in a way, they're like the same um, mm. because it's so like individual and you're really like working on yourself to be the best that you can. Um, but in different respects, you know, with diving, training with the team and stuff, bodybuilding is kind of, you're sort of in the gym, you're by yourself get stuff done and then you sort of see people at shows and whatever and um, so it's kind of a toss up between them both they both have their little perks that mean a lot to me i mean it seems like you travel to like the most amazing places with bodybuilding though because like, yeah. i see you traveling all these places i'm like oh my goodness i want to go there <laughs> <laughs> it looks yeah. great yeah it looks great i was I, well i don't know if i did a video recently or last week with um yona who you know mm -hmm. diver mm -hmm. um and obviously in the last few weeks a lot of people had a massive wake-up call into what has been going on uh, well for years and mm -hmm. people have mm -hmm. become ignorant to chosen not to learn not to listen not to educate mm -hmm. themselves and I mean it's been a massive wake-up call to me um, and I well firstly I want to know if you've ever well growing up in gymnastics and then into diving and then into bodybuilding have you ever experienced any difficulties with being a black athlete it's actually like funny that you ask that but like even through like gymnastics diving and now bodybuilding with what I do now I don't find that I've ever come across uh any challenges due to my uh, skin color um and I've kind of never if I've had like a uh, issue or something hasn't been right I've never thought oh it might be because of the color of my skin um so sort of within the sports setting I've never really felt it as such but have you felt it outside of the sports setting like it may not be necessarily in the pool and the way that you're judged but mm. outside of that just just generally growing up in the UK uh generally growing up in the UK I have um and there was a couple of instances, even as close as two years ago. Um, it's like ignorant remarks, um, just like, you know, where are you from? Oh, I'm from London. Like, oh no, where are you from? Like, London. It's, it's I think a lot of it is just ignorance um, to the fact, um, but it's something that I've, tried like growing up not let it get under my skin um and it kind of bad to say it's been like a norm but it has you kind of just grow up not really knowing 
exactly because i was talking to yona about and he was talking mm -hmm. about racial banter and how like he doesn't really yeah. let it get to him but at the yes. same time why are people saying those things and why is it even deemed as funny yeah um i think growing up there was like a lot of that and it was kind of like a it never it never really got to me but then again like sort of what yona has said and touched on why is it funny but again when you're younger it's you don't you kind of don't really know any better and i think with this coming to light what has in the cu past couple of weeks it's really like opened my eyes as well to oh actually re you've been quite exposed to like a lot of like casual racism as it may seem yeah and, and what has been something in particular that you might have learned in this last few weeks that you either didn't know or that you kind of come to realize like you said you came to realize that there's been a lot of casual racism because i've mm. no i notice it more and more just the little way that people think and people automatically racially profile that they shouldn't people shouldn't be doing something in a certain way and it's like it's, it's was like whoa all of these things and it's actually i've started to like call people out on it i'm like you can't say that and mm -hmm. for x mm -hmm. y and z reason but what mm -hmm. is something in particular that you've learned um i've kind of this might be not not really controversial but it was actually something that i spoke to one of my friends about and um, when it did sort of come to light and growing up um like as a black girl in london you would get the stereotypes um and i kind of never really fitted in to that kind of black girl stereotype. So growing up, a lot of my friends were white and I would get comments from the black girls at my school, uh, like sort of calling me like a bounty and things like this. And again, growing up, I sort of mm, brushed it off. It didn't really mean anything. And then everything that sort of come to light uh, in these past weeks has sort of been like, oh, actually, it's... <laughs> It's really hard to it's really hard to explain um, what really came to light is that sometimes it's not just black against white, as people have been sort of saying, but it does come within the minorities itself. Well, there's this analogy of like if there's 200 houses on a street and one's yeah. burning down, you're yeah. going to go help the house that's burning down. You're not going to be like, yeah. what about my house? And yeah. I, I don't know what you think about that whole um, argument. Yeah, I've kind of found that quite upsetting. Um, the fact that there has been such an issue and people have almost purposely gone like, oh, what about me? What about me? And it's not saying that you don't matter. It's just right now there's an issue within humanity that has been going on for a very long time. And unfortunately, now being 2020, it's still happening and people are really like, whoa, this needs to stop. Um, and there needs to be more education and people just need to wake up to it a little bit more. And it's it, seeing it has been quite upsetting. It's, I think everyone I was saying to Yona as well, like everyone's so anti everything and everyone's yeah. so, so worried and afraid and scared of something that's different and something that they're not yeah. used to or they may not understand. Yeah. And yeah. without taking the time to actually understand, mm -hmm. it's hard to ever even comprehend what someone might be thinking or feeling. Thinking yeah definitely definitely i know that sort of when it all happened i felt really like whoa like it was heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking to be where we are today and stuff like that still is so present yeah it's almost like you kind of feel so helpless uh, about yeah. what you're actually able to do as mm -hmm. but you know the more i look on social media and things that people it's like the smallest things that can help make massive changes like Definitely. throughout everything it's not about it's not just about being on social media and posting a black square or posting uh things you know with hashtags it's about actually yeah. trying taking to action. yeah taking action it's all well and yeah. good posting something but that doesn't mean yeah. that you're not it's talking to the people that it's having those uncomfortable conversations and definitely just talking to people that might say things in a certain way and actually be like that's not okay yeah, yeah. and here's why go read yeah. this go listen yeah. to this yeah it's been a ma I, and one other thing i was also really curious with being mm. a bodybuilder mm -hmm. i saw recently oh actually i think it might have been today or yesterday megan posted a video about 
the stigma of being a woman in yes. bodybuilding. Have you yes. encountered problems with that in itself, about being the oh. stereotypical woman? Yes, yeah. So that has been ever since I started. And I look back at like when I started in 2016 and I was hardly like muscly at all, but it was the fact that I trained and people would be like, oh God, you look like a guy or like, it's, it, it just blows my mind, it absolutely blows my mind that still there's such a stigma around like certain things but it's definitely been a thing in my career that I've my skin has kind of thickened too um and it's about you know kind of letting it go of your head and again it's just ignorance I mean because I see how much hard work you put in to getting to the level that you're at and I don't think mm. people realize that it's not just lifting weights, the sacrifices that you have to make with yeah. sleep, what you have to eat, what you're like, you have to monitor every single thing. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not an office job that you can just be like, I'm just gonna leave the office and <laughs> yeah. go home and eat what I want. It's, yeah. there's a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a lifestyle. Um, so like kind of when I started back in 2016, I was like, oh yeah, you know, I was really like blase about it all and was like, I need something to work towards now that I'm not diving um, and I kind of miss like competing and having that sort of goal in mind and then as soon as I sort of got into it it was like you're either committed to it or you're not um, and it's just become a lifestyle. And to see the transformation from 2016 and just to see the level that you've gotten to, I, mm. to me it seems like so quick like going from never <laughs> done it before to like now turning pro and you know yeah. all of these competitions that you're going to it's mm. it's really admirable to see how quickly you've turned that like from nothing to your job yeah. like you say oh, thank you thank you it's been it's been really admirable and well just one note to finish on let's say mm -hmm. what is what is the one piece of advice that you would like to give to people watching this that either have a family member that is um, either um, racist, has said casual racism, even just like the smallest thing, or even just um, against how, what a woman should be. And they have mm. this picture and there's, mm. what do you say to those people? I would say, don't be afraid to have the conversations. Um, and don't think just because it's a family member that you can't, like, be brave you've got this like it's you can look just look on social media as we've said and like everybody's kind of taking that stance and this is comfortable as uncomfortable as it is go for it just tackling it and educating people one by one I know that that will help make a change I mean it does boggle me and as to like mm -hmm. what is going on but mm -hmm. the the only way that we can make change is to like you say talk about it and educate yeah, and listen definitely. and you know amplify the voices of black mm -hmm. people to be able to share their stories but thank you for you no know problem. coming I, I can't we have to we both look you live in London now right yes I do I do you we now that you're not in Plymouth anymore you need we need yeah. we need to hang out when all of this is over yeah, and we don't have to do it on definitely. zoom <laughs> excellent <laughs> yeah. cool most definitely well thank you again Ria and I'll speak to you soon Thank you for having bye, me. Bye bye, bye. bye. It's always so nice to get to speak to Ria. I mean, it's it's been at least a couple of years since I last saw her because she's been traveling around with bodybuilding. I've been traveling around with diving, but it's always great to hear her voice and her perspective on what it was like for her growing up in the UK and as an athlete, and in particular as a female athlete uh, in bodybuilding. Understanding how much hard work she puts into what she does every single day is so important. It is very admirable, the amount of work that she puts in. But I hope you all got a little bit of something from that video. But in the meantime, I'll see you next week where I will be back with another video. But until then, stay safe and I'll see you soon.